please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Hi, welcome back to the show. AdLabs Entertainment's Q3 earnings were quite lackluster. Despite this being a seasonal, a seasonally strong quarter, the revenue growth was just about four and a half odd percent this time. Niman Bakshi, the CEO of AdLabs Entertainment, joins us now to talk about that. Niman, thanks so much for joining us on the show. It was, uh, you know, um, an okay set of numbers, four and a half percent revenue growth. Uh, do you think it's because of the, uh, you know, the the regulatory hurdles or whatever, demon, GST, etc., that have impacted footfalls, or do you get a sense that uh, you know things are going to be like this for a while, low single-digit growth? Uh, well, actually, uh, our footfall growths have been uh, a good 14 percent compared to last year, same time. And uh, the revenue growth that you see of 4.2 percent is without the GST refund that uh, we are likely to get. Uh, so the, uh, for the quarter, uh, since we are a uh, high capex project and uh, government of uh, Maharashtra had recognized us for a entertainment tax subsidy for the period of 10 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, with the GST advent, uh, the refund mechanism is uh, alongside many other VAT uh, uh, many of the companies which are suffering from the VAT refund mechanism to be clarified, mm -hmm. we are also one of them. Mm -hmm. So 5.22 crores of uh, value is what we are anticipated to gain back and that would purely flow into the EBITDA numbers of uh, the company. By so when will you get it? Well, we are actually, it's at an advanced stage of clarification and uh, right from the automobile or many other companies are also awaiting the same. Mm. I, I think probably in a, a month or so, we should be able to get the clarification that we seek. Okay. Iman, uh, good morning. <coughs> so, you know, footfall is of course one issue. But what about uh, pricing? Uh, uh, how has that evolved uh, since you opened the park and uh, what kind of guidance do you have? You have like a <coughs> pricing power to keep increasing it uh, over the next uh, three or four years. Uh, how, how does that move? Uh, well, actually, uh, we are actually India's only theme park, yes. and and you will notice that uh, there is really there was really no direct referent uh, comparison to uh, us as a business. Uh, so over a period of three years, we have uh, taken various measures and we have uh, verified different uh, price models based on international standards. Uh, I think we are fairly set uh, now in terms of the way pricing should be. Uh, we have uh, focused on consumption and uh, propelling non-ticketing revenues apart from the core ticket price model. So uh, while uh, uh, most of the parks in the country are at 85% uh, kind of a ticketing revenue, mm -hmm. we are at 70% which essentially says very healthy non-ticketing mix uh, to the business. And uh, that's really the, okay. really the future of the business here. What can you guide in terms of uh, revenue growth for the uh, FY19 and more importantly, uh, debt? How much can you bring it down by? Uh, right. So uh, the good news really is that we have uh, already signed two term sheets and uh, we are expected to reduce debt by 35% uh, uh, number in, in uh, in probably a, a, in next one to two months, we should have uh, clarified the entire. Uh, so it will come down to it's now at 750 crore. No, it will go to 750 crore. crores. Uh, okay. Currently, we are at 1070. Okay. Okay, we'll leave it at that. Thank you so much Thank for joining you. us and giving us a quick update. Thank That's the word coming in from Ad Labs Entertainment. But moving on, real estate company Soba saw a good quarter on a year on year basis due to a base effect, but sequentially it was a flat quarter. JC Sharma, the vice chairman and MD of Soba, joins in now to talk about that. Mr. Sharma, I first want to start off with your volumes because in the quarter gone by, the uh, you saw the highest pre-sales value in the last 11 quarters and your sales volumes were about 0.93 million square feet. What is the trend looking like? How is the market and what kind of volume target would you have for the full year? Good morning. See, as far as the volumes are concerned, the Bangalore continues to provide us 69-70% of our total volumes as we have been witnessing for last so many quarters and the trend should continue. What has worked for us as far as our other divisions are concerned, the Kerala market and the NCR market, they have also performed and literally speaking turned around where the headwinds continue to operate almost in all the markets. And we believe that going forward, uh, all these markets should continue to do well, which means that we can expect double-digit growth in our volumes and value for next few quarters as we move ahead. 
Okay. Any guidance for this quarter itself? Nee, we believe that when, whenever we give guidance, it doesn't work out. And we also <laughs> communicate that headwinds continue to be there in our sector. Mm. Uh, under that environment, the positive things remain that we are going to launch many more new projects in almost all our markets. Okay. So the volume should be picking up as we move forward. Okay. But no point in a tough environment to give a, some enough. kind of guidance mm. and then to explain. Mr. Okay. Sharma, good morning. What, so these new uh, launches that you have, uh, what kind of uh, net realizations would you make on, on these launches? See, again, Bangalore will continue to dominate in the new launches. Then in the Kerala market also, three, four new launches are being planned. In the NCR market also, a couple of launches are being planned. In Pune market also, in Chennai market also, two, three launches are being planned. So we believe that next few quarters will be a good launches, and that should have a positive impact uh, as far as our sales volumes are concerned. But realizations yeah. have fallen, isn't it? Just a bit, not a great deal. But basically, uh, per square foot, realizations have fallen. Will that hold even in fourth quarter? No, no I think uh, that that's not true. Mm -hmm. Realizations, if you look at for the products, uh, on an average, they were about 8,000 rupees plus per square feet. So excluding Mumbai market, <coughs> our average realizations in India, they are the highest. Mm. When we talk about our share, mm. so in the Cochin market or in NCR market, somewhere we have to share the revenues with our joint development partners. So from that perspective, it looks a little bit lower. Okay. Uh -huh. But net-net, our realizations are consistent. And going forward, they should remain plus minus 3-4%, depending upon what kind of a product mix okay. you are selling. Mm. We may be the only developers mm -hmm. where 40% of our total sales value comes from products exceeding 2 crore rupees. Okay. Okay. We may be the only developer where more than 20% of our sales come within the age range of so, up to 30 years sort of oh. a thing. Sure. I just wanted to end this discussion by asking you about what came out in the budget with respect to that dedicated uh, affordable housing fund that was set up by the government. Do you think that will help in any way to increase the foray? And for Soba itself, are you planning to uh, you know, pump in more money in this segment? See, we, we, we do plan. Uh, if you look at Shoba should be launching about 1.8 million square feet of uh, a new project in Bangalore North, where as far as BDH is concerned, they have given the plan approval. If we need to still go through with the municipal corporation plan approval. Uh, the affordable housing is the future of India. Because uh, as things stand today, uh, with the calibration of the inflation growth and the salary growth, uh, these two-bedroom homes with 60 meter square carpet area and 1,000 square feet built-up area with income tax benefit to the developers and financial incentives to the customers, that is the way forward. There is a huge demand uh, and, and it needs to be tapped. In Indian context where the problem is, at the state level, the construction permits do not come on time. And because of that, our ability to launch projects, uh, whatever we talk about, it gets impacted due to these uh, authorities not giving you the approvals in a timely manner. Fair but for that, affordable housing would have taken off and likely to take off. All right. All right, Mr. Sharma. Thanks a lot for your time today. That's Soba Developers. Uh, by the way, just want to pull out the intraday chart of Sun Pharma. Just, just see that stock flying right now. Uh, 600 on that stock. Uh, uh, of course, uh, the, you know, the, the, the buzz was that the Halol inspection would start uh, somewhere around uh, this week. Uh, that, of course, is going to be the, the big trigger for Sun Pharma stock. But uh, all of a sudden, there's a, there's a massive buying which is taking place in that stock. So interesting. For the market, we are of the high point of the morning. Uh, Ashwini Gujral and Mitesh Taka back with us. Prakash Kaba also joining us. Uh, uh, good morning again to all of you. Uh, Ashwini, your thoughts on how trade has panned out so far? See, the first dip clearly has been bought both on Nifty as well as Bank Nifty and that is the change in psychology that's happened today. We opened above uh, key resistances, came back, retested. So now is still a good time to get long on uh, Nifty as well as Bank Nifty. Uh, Bank of Baroda continues to move higher, uh, so does Yes Bank. Uh, SBI is uh, moving back from the low point of the day and other PSU banks like PNB 
etc are higher so it looks like uh, as the day goes by and as you know shorts realize that uh, maybe downside is uh, limited you could have a better day than uh, you had on friday or thursday so that way uh, you should remain long and uh, for the moment yes bank is a buy with a stop of 324 target of 340 bob is a buy with a stop of 160 target of 174 and ciat is a buy with a stop of 1590 target of 1650 but ashwini the first uh, high also got sold into that's not technically significant see obviously both the bulls and the bears will try to see what is holding on the high got sold off but you didn't make a start making a fresh low so if i sold at the high right now i'm a little jittery because uh, the market hasn't gone down all that much mm -hmm. and that way you know maybe i'll cover my shorts and uh, the market will move higher so uh, at lows there was buying at highs there was selling but the sell off wasn't big and plus today you know the global support is also missing so today is that kind of day where you know a short covering rally can be constructed okay okay mitesh, mitesh. chakkar and prakash gabar also with us uh, prakash let me start with you uh, the mid caps are doing pretty well up more than 1.5% uh, any thoughts on that and uh, any stocks to track now i like two stocks basically i would say that uh, bank of baroda has already achieved its target uh, enhanced the target to around 174 very good chance that bank of baroda is climbing up to levels 74 stop below 158 or maybe 159 should be fine i like from the mainland stocks hero motors that looks good seen a good base formation here very good chance we can see a climb to around 3650 stop below 3530 okay mitesh uh, you were also playing the same ranges uh, at the moment uh, do you have a nifty trade or will it only be stocks trades no i think that uh, at this moment you know especially that we've got a uh, some kind of a dip i think this uh, these are good levels to enter nifty keep the okay. stop below 10480 or just uh, you know 5 points below that on the cash level spot level and i think 10575580 would be your target for tomorrow uh, the stock calls that i have balkrishna industries buy with the stop at 1139 targets of 1200 and rolta it goes with the disclaimer that i have positions in the stock uh, it's, it's it's in my portfolio buy with the stop at 69 look for targets of 85